So I'd like to start off by talking about bungee jumping, right? You're probably wondering, like, why are you talking about bungee jumping in a presentation about the media? Well, bungee jumping is all about perspective. And has anyone in here ever gone bungee jumping? All right, one person in the back. We can relate. We can relate on something. Have you ever told someone about going bungee jumping? They don't get it. They just <laughs> don't get it because they weren't standing at the edge of that platform looking down at that 40-foot drop below. They didn't have the same perspective that you had, right? They didn't experience it. They didn't get to see it. And thus, they couldn't feel for it. You know, they didn't get it. So as we see this a lot, right? We're driving down the road, and we see a car accident up ahead. And our, our first reaction is, oh, I wonder what that is. And then you, you know it's a car accident, but you're not going to look because you know that if you look at that car accident, you might see something you don't want to see. So you're doing well. You're driving, driving along. You're not going to look. You're not going to look. And then right when you get next to the car accident, you look, right? And you immediately regret looking at the car accident. But everyone does it. And then you go home. It's 6 o'clock. The news comes on. And a reporter comes on and says, two people were killed today along Route I-95 when a tractor trailer crashed into a minivan. And you tell the person sitting next to you, I saw that. It, it was horrible. It was, it was one of the worst things I've ever seen. And they don't get it. They can't quite understand what you're telling them because they didn't see it up close. They didn't see it through the first person. Now imagine, imagine if you were driving along the road and you, you had Google Glass on. You had a cell phone camera and you were able to capture the same emotion that you felt through the first person up close, and then you were able to send that footage or that picture to a larger media organization who was then able to relay that to the public. So then you're watching the news. You're watching the 6 o'clock news with the person next to you, and all of a the sudden, they can feel for that. They understand what went on because now they don't have to rely on that reporter who is standing 50 feet away from the event. They don't have to rely on that news helicopter that's flying around telling you to care about that little speck that's supposed to be a car accident. You can rely on what you see. You can see the human suffering up close and thus you can feel emotion for it. You can care about it more. And this shows, shows the power of the media because the ability of media to make people care about things is a very, very powerful tool. President Richard Nixon once said, the American public doesn't believe anything until they see it on television. I'd, I'd amend that statement now to say the American public doesn't believe anything until they see it up close on television, the internet, or social media. Social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter. Now, it's, it's probably a good thing Richard Nixon didn't have a Twitter. Could you imagine Richard Nixon's Twitter? Like, <laughs> the Watergate has security guards? <laughs> Hashtag not a crook, right? <laughs> right, but seriously, Nixon's quote, it, it holds a lot of value in the sense that people, they truly don't care about things. They don't care about the news until they see them up close. But now we have advancements in technology that are allowing anyone to capture the news and capture these events up close, right? And it's producing a more compelling news cycle that's filled with breaking news. And our culture, our culture is obsessed with breaking news. We love it. We thrive off it. Every single time we see the words breaking news at the bottom of our televisions, we look. We look because we feel like we have to look. We look because we want to go into work the next day and stand next to the water cooler and tell the guy, hey, did you see that car accident? It was bad. It, it was bad. You, I saw the human suffering. Right? We look because we want to go to the cafeteria and we want to talk about things and we want to get closer and closer to the news. And this is going to become easier and easier. And do you know why? It's because of these advancements in technology that we have. It's because of Google Glass. It's because of GoPros. It's because we have YouTube accounts that we can upload this footage in this media too. Right? And this breaking news cycle is so compelling to all of us because we're so used, we're so used to the fact that there's 10 networks covering the same thing. Now, let's look at an example. Black Friday. Right? Everyone is talking about the deals surrounding Black Friday when the holiday season's coming up. Every single news station has a story about it, but no one cares. And, and I'd like to amend that statement to say every single news station except Fox News, who's covering the war on Christmas, and um, 
That's a whole different story. But every single news station has something to do with Black Friday around this time. And then all of a sudden, a soccer mom pulls out her cell phone camera and records a fight between two people who are trying to get the last plasma screen television at Target. And all of a sudden, every major news network wants this footage. They want this footage because it breaks them out of this cycle. It breaks them out of this average news cycle that we find today because everyone has to fill the 24 hours of content that they've promised to their viewers. Right? So what's the role of the mainstream media in all of this? Well, the mainstream media is going to use this footage and they're going to act as a middleman to news. They're going to take the footage that you've captured on your GoPro, on your Google Glass, on your cell phone camera, and they're going to take that footage, and they're going to air it, and they're going to bring in panelists who can discuss why people fight at Target. They're going to bring in panelists and experts who discuss Black Friday content and Black Friday conflict. And that's the news cycle that we have to look forward to, where we have everyday citizens participating. They're participating in the news cycle. So you're probably thinking, hey, this guy's not trained to be a journalist. Well, you have to make the distinction between citizen observers and citizen journalists and then a trained journalist because trained journalists know how to tell a story, right? And it doesn't mean that we need citizens to take over mainstream news networks, but we have to understand the interdependence between citizen journalists and mainstream networks because it's ultimately going to produce a more compelling, a more accurate, and a more participatory news cycle that more people are involved in. Right? And you're probably thinking, well, what if I'm that person who captures that fight? What if I'm the person who captures the fight in Target on my cell phone? Who cares? Who's going to use it? Who's going to use that footage? Well, I'll tell you, every single person in this room has the context to every single reporter, every single media executive, and every single newscaster out there through one media platform. And that me media platform is Twitter. You have the ability to connect with anyone at any time through Twitter. So if you capture breaking news, you can tweet that breaking news at CNN, and it can be on the air in minutes. It can be on the air in minutes, and those are the advancements in technology that we're dealing with. It's creating an entirely new news cycle that more people are participating in, right? And it's fascinating. It's fascinating that you can capture news as it's happening, and then all of a sudden, the world can know about it. So it raises the question, what kind of responsibility comes along with this? Because you have the tools to capture it, you have the ability to get it shown to the world, so it raises the question, do you as a bystander to news have an obligation, an obligation to capture news as it's happening, to capture injustices if you see them on your camera or your GoPro or your Google Glass and then relay it to the world? You have that obligation. And before we answer that question, we need to discuss what the role of journalism is historically. Historically, journalism is about holding people accountable. Right now, I'm working on a documentary called Those Who Fight. And the whole premise of the documentary is about holding people accountable for their actions. Right? So as we look at this, we can go back to looking at mainstream journalism just for a second. And as we're looking at the fourth estate through the first person, let's consider the role of journalism, right? Many people consider the fourth estate to be the most important branch of government because it holds people accountable. It holds people for, accountable for their actions. It holds everyone from the average citizen to the government official accountable for what they're doing. So back to the question of whether or not you as a bystander have an obligation to capture news, let, let's propose this idea, that these new advancements in journalism these new advancements in technology are ultimately going to decrease the bystander effect. And the bystander effect is the idea that if you see an injustice happening, you're going to not step in because you think that what you can add to the situation is not going to change what's happening. You think what you can add to the situation is not going to affect the outcome. Well, now... The social expectation is that if you see an injustice, if you see a police officer hitting an innocent citizen, that you'll capture it on camera. You'll capture it on your Google Glass. 
because that's the social expectation. You don't come home and tell someone that you saw something bad happen, and they say, oh, where was that at? They say, where's the video? Where, where's the video that I can share with my friends, that I can let other people know about what's happening? So now we have this technology. We have Google Glass, and we can say, OK, Glass. OK, Glass, record a video. And it changes the perspective. It changes the way that we look at things. It does. And it's very, very compelling. So we look at this, and we look at the role of the press. And the role of the press has so much more power than people realize. Because the ability to record video and hold people accountable for their actions, we've seen in recent history, is changing. It's changing the news cycle, and it's changing how people care about things. We look at the civil war in Syria. In March of 2013, a ton of news stations started reporting that the Assad regime may be using chemical weapons on his own people. And guess what? No one cared. No one truly cared because they couldn't see the human suffering. They couldn't see it up close. All of a sudden, in, on August 21st of 2013, a few citizen journalists with cell phone cameras and a YouTube account captured some of the most blatant human injustices in history. They posted them to YouTube, a series of videos that caused people to care about the news. It caused them to care. And it makes you wonder, what if there was Google Glass during the Rwandan genocide? Would it have been possible? Would it have been possible for the international community to turn their head and not provide assistance? It would have been impossible, simply because we cannot deny things when we see them up close through the first person. Because it's a new perspective. It's a perspective that causes us to feel emotion. It's a perspective that causes us to connect. It's a perspective that causes us to feel human suffering. So as we look at this, consider perspective. Consider the perspective of your favorite football player. And when he goes up to catch the touchdown and misses it, consider the fact that maybe you're not right. Consider the fact that the way that you're looking at this situation from the news helicopter or from the camera that is 100 feet away from the football field maybe isn't always the best perspective to look at. Because we see this. You see the replay of your favorite player missing the touchdown, and you say he should have caught that. But it's not until you see the replay. It's not until you see the replay from a different angle that you understand that maybe it wasn't that easy. Maybe it wasn't that easy. Perspective is everything. Perspective allows you to understand a situation better. Right? So when you watch this talk, when it's on the internet, you'll be able to see what I'm seeing right now. You'll be able to see the perspective of a TEDx speaker. And when I watch the video, I'll be able to see the perspective of a TEDx audience. Thus, I'll be able to understand TEDx better. You'll be able to understand understand TEDx better, and it's ultimately going to create a more compelling, compelling video cycle, a compelling news cycle. It does come with a lot of responsibility. The, the ability to capture things like this comes with a lot of responsibility. It comes with the responsibility to not only hold government officials accountable, but to hold yourself accountable. To hold yourself accountable, to not break someone's privacy, to not capture that car accident, if people are still receiving help, to give people the respect they deserve. But it's important to understand that with this technology, we see a change in perspective. We start to understand news better, unless we start to care about it more. And that's the news cycle that you have to look forward to. Thank you.